Hey, family. Praise the Lord. This is Minister Presley. I'm so glad you decided to join the Abyssinian Baptist Church Virtue Sunday morning service here in Philly for the word of God that will resurrect your soul and convince, convict, and convert you because it's not what you have done. It's because of what Jesus has done for you at the cross. God bless you. Enjoy.
It's time to be blessed. It's time to give. Oh, we can do better than that. Uh, think about all that God has done for you. Uh, he protects you. He provides for you. And he even preserves you. Uh, the least we can do is worship him through our giving. Uh, this is all a part of our worship. Uh, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 9 and 7, it says that each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And even though we may not be at the church physically, we can still participate in our giving. Uh, we have four ways uh, that we give. Uh, our first way is that you can simply go to our website, uh, abyssinianbc.com uh, backslash give dash online. Our second option is that you can give through our uh, app Easy Tithe, which is found in your Play Store or your App Store on your smart devices. The third way is you can simply just drop off your offering uh, at Abyssinian Baptist Church. Our address is 4210 Germantown Avenue, and our stewards will handle your offering. Um, fourthly and lastly is we want to make sure that we can be a blessing to our pastor. Our pastor, Dr. Pointer, is not on the salary per se, but he's trusting God to touch the hearts of his people to bless him and his family. And he has two options. Um, one, you can simply give through Cash App. Uh, his handle is dollar sign point two four one. And you can also designate uh, your giving to pastor through your easy tithe as well. Um, we have a plethora of uh, ways to give. And we want to just personally thank everyone who has been giving already. We uh, ask God to continue to bless and keep you. And we also uh, want to thank God for those that will give as well. We also ask God to bless and keep you as well. Um, we thank you. God bless you. And heaven smile upon you. Amen. Good morning, my ABC family. We uh, ask that we would all continue to pray for our, the families that have lost loved ones and uh, friends to the coronavirus. Uh, we encourage uh, people to continue uh, with the wearing of the protective mask and gloves and the practice of social distancing. Uh, of course, we're gonna continue to pray for all of our doctors and nurses and all of our frontline people who are most vulnerable to the coronavirus and to those that are experiencing cabin fever. I'm one of those. Remember this too shall pass. Turn if you would with me to Acts chapter 27, beginning at verse 15. The book of Acts chapter 27, beginning at verse 15. I'll wait till you get there. Acts chapter 27, beginning at verse 15. I'm going to be reading from the New Living Translation, Acts chapter 27, beginning at verse 15. Verse 15 of Acts chapter 27 says, The sailors couldn't turn the ship into the wind, so they gave up and let it run before the gale. Verse 16 says, we sailed along the sheltered side of a small island named Clauda, where with great difficulty we hoisted aboard the lifeboat being towed behind us. Then the sailors bound ropes around the hull of the ship to strengthen it. They were afraid of being driven across to the sandbars of Sirtis off the African coast. So they lowered the sea anchor, don't miss that, to slow the ship and were driven before the wind. Verse 18 says, the next day as gale force winds continued to batter the ship, the crew began throwing the cargo overboard. You don't wanna miss that. The following day, they even took some of the ship's gear and threw it overboard. The terrible storm raged for many days blotting out the sun and the stars until at last all hope was gone. Verse 21 says, no one had eaten for a long time. Finally, Paul, listen to this, Paul called the crew together and said, men, 
you should have listened to me in the first place. Let me repeat that. Paul says, men, you should have listened to me in the first place and not left Crete. You would have avoided all this damage and loss. But take courage. None of you will lose your lives, even though the ship will go down. Let me repeat verse 21. It says, no one had eaten for a long time. Finally, Paul called the crew together and said, men, women, everybody, you should have listened to me in the first place and not left Crete you would have avoided all this damage and loss. Somebody said, if I'd have known back then what I know now, I would not have done this. I want to talk around the thought, the subject, my brothers and sisters, crisis intervention. Crisis intervention. You need to know there is a difference between crisis prevention and crisis intervention. I said there's a difference. See, crisis prevention includes methods that are intended to keep people from experiencing future crisis. But crisis intervention, that's what we're talking about. It refers to the strategies and responses that you use once the signs of a crisis are already present. And crisis intervention when you, when you utilize that, you can reduce the impact of the crisis immediately. Notice again in verse 21, Paul had called the crew together. Paul, the man of God. Paul, the prisoner. Paul, the one who suffered for Christ. He called the men together and said, you should have listened to me in the first place. He said you could have or would have avoided all the damage in law. Anybody can relate to that. Somebody told you something when they told you and you didn't listen to what they told you. Now you find yourself in a world of trouble, a world of hurt. And you say, if I had to listen, you and I today, we're facing a crisis of global proportions on the sea of life. And this passage, this scripture is an account of Paul's voyage towards Rome when he was sent as a prisoner by Festus, the governor, upon his appeal to Caesar. And understand, you read this passage, Acts chapter 27. In the beginning of the voyage, everything seemed to go well. You know, it was calm. It was prosperous in the beginning. I don't want to mention no names, but there's somebody now in the national line, like keep talking about before this corona, it was calm and prosperous and we the best this and I've done the best that. But Paul gave them notice of a storm coming. It was calm and it can be calm, but you've got to prepare ahead of time for a storm. But Paul couldn't dissuade the crew, the captain, not to continue with the voyage. So the Bible says as they continued their voyage, they ran into bad weather and a major storm. It got so bad that the crew didn't even think they was going to survive the storm. You ever been there? Got so bad, so rough, life situations, turbulences that you didn't think you was going to make it. I've been there. But Paul, Paul told them, God is speaking to somebody today. Although you ignored my advice when you should have done what I told you to do back then, my God, Paul's God, our God is going to see us through this storm. Do I have a witness? In other words, you may have to hold on to pieces of the wreck as life, as a lifeline. That's what happened in the te- The ship came apart, but their men, their, their, the crew made it by holding on to something. My question to you, my brothers and sisters here this morning, What are you holding on to this morning? No, not your neighbor. I'm talking about you. What are you holding on in the midst of this crisis? Is it your money? I'm just asking a question. Is it your stock investments? Don't look at me and get upset. I'm just asking a question. What are you holding on to? Who are you holding on to this morning? Is it your health? 
Because I hear somebody say that uh, this coronavirus, that's other people's problems, not, not mine. I don't know who you're holding on or what you're holding to, but you need to know, as I found out and others have also. You need to listen to the word of God, which will guide you through the storm and get you to dry land. Do I have a witness somewhere? See, it was good enough to get Paul, I'm talking about God's instruction. It was good enough to get Paul and the crew to safety back then. And God's instructions is good enough to get you and I to safety today. Can I get a witness somewhere? Is there somebody out there sitting there that would say, I know if it had not been for the Lord on my side, I wouldn't have made it. I'm talking about some honest folk here today. We experience a crisis now, aren't we? Coronavirus. Every time you turn on the TV, it's about uh, coronavirus and f fatalities and folk that have taken ill and folk that have recovered, folk that may not recover, folk that have not recovered. It's a pand pand pandemic of global proportions. But there's hope. I want to give somebody hope today and reassurance for those of us who are alive and going through this crisis. God is indeed in control. Isn't he in control? I mean, you don't have to take it from me. Hasn't he been in control of your life? Hasn't he been in control of your life? Hasn't he been in control of your life? I know I got some witnesses up in here. You may feel like you're coming apart, but you need to know it's going to work out if, that's a conditional, if you trust the Lord through it all. Notice over the years, there have been other pandemics. Yes, it has. Remember, it was a cholera pandemic in 1910. It was the flu pandemic in 1968. It was HIV AIDS in 2005 through 11. It was Ebola in 2014 through 16. And today it's the coronavirus pandemic. I understand and I understand I hear and I'm very sensitive to the fact that a whole lot of people are suffering. There are members, there are people, there's neighbors, coworkers, that have lost lives or the lives of their loved ones. There's a whole lot of uncertainty, stress everywhere. And I hear somebody, I hear you. God hears you even more importantly. Somebody saying if God is in control, and he is, why is he allowing all of this? Well, you need to also go back to what God has said because you do know that life and death is in his hand. I know I'm right about it. Let me share a story with you. Maybe this will help somebody. This is a true story, a recent story. I was checking up on a friend of mine this past week, a colleague, a brother pastor preacher. I was checking up on him and he said to me in his text, because I'd asked him, How, are you and your family doing okay? You know, we're supposed to check on each other. He said, yes, sir, we are good. He said, I don't know if you know or if you've heard, Brother Pastor, but my dad died from coronavirus this past Tuesday. Then he went on to say, but, wait a minute, I'm getting ready to respond, man. I'm sorry to hear, and, and you have uh, my condolences, and all of that is true. But he said, wait a minute, but even though my dad died, he was saved. This is what the preacher said. He's lost his father. Today is Sunday, last Tuesday, to coronavirus. He's sad, but he's also hopeful and encouraged. Because he said, brother pastor, he was saved. He said, my dad, my dad died from corona Tuesday, but he's all right. Think about that. Imagine that. Somebody does remember that Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Though you be dead, yet shall you live. Do I have a witness up in here this morning? Notice the text reveals what we ought not do in a storm or crisis. I said it reveals what we ought not do. See, when we're caught in a crisis, we typically react in three ways. We either drift we discard or throw away, or we despair. I said when things are not going well, we have the propensity to drift. 
That's in verse 15 of Acts 27. It says, because the sailors couldn't head into the wind, we gave way to it, the Bible says, and were driven along. The first thing a storm has a tendency to do, if we allow it, is to cause you and I to drift. In other words, we have a tendency, a propensity to let go of our goals because of a storm. But you don't want to let go of your goals. I'm talking about goals like college education, opening up a business, getting out of debt. You forget where you're headed and we forget our values and start drifting, but you don't want to drift. When you're in a dark situation, in our humanness, we have a tendency to drift. But don't allow yourself to drift. Not only don't drift, but you don't want to discard. Verse 28, things didn't get any better on the apostles Paul's voyage to Rome. I'm reading the Bible. It says, we took such a violent battering from the storm that the next day they began, to, here we go, throw the cargo overboard. In other words, when a crisis emerges for us, first we start drifting, then we start throwing away stuff, discarding things. And with the sailors, it was their cargo. Then the ships tackle. And then eventually their food in verse 38 of Acts 27. And finally, themselves. The Bible says they all jumped overboard, verses 43 to 44. You read Acts 27 when you get a chance. It says they jumped overboard and started swimming to shore. And we find ourselves oftentimes when storms come our way. We have tempted to throw out stuff that are important to us. We want to get rid of stuff. We become impulsive and we give up on our dreams. When the storms come, we often have a tendency to run out on the relationships and throw away the values that we learn as children. But not only don't drift and don't discard, but don't despair. Look at verse 20 of Acts 27. It's there. It said, when neither sun nor the stars appeared for many days and the storm continued. This storm didn't give up. It continued. It continued raging. It says, we finally gave up all hope of being saved. My brothers and sisters, when the storm comes and is extreme, sometimes you can get to the point of despair. And the last thing you want to do is throw out your hope. Why is hope important? That's why you ask. Because hope impacts how we see ourselves. Hope impacts what we value. Yes, it does. Hope impacts how we live our lives. Can I get a witness? Remember the parable of the talents in Matthew 25, beginning at verse 14? It says that we will be rewarded for our good stewardship of what God has done and entrusted to us in this life. I know we're facing storms and we're going through. Notice the operative word, going through. God didn't start us on this journey to not allow us to complete this journey. And though it gets rough and tough, God wants us to remember we're going to get through. And notice the sailors they gave up hope in the passage because they didn't know or didn't realize or had forgotten that Paul's God was in control. I don't know who God is talking to this morning. I don't know if God is talking to you or your neighbor next to you. But somehow when storms come, we have a tendency to forget that God is still in control. You remember, there have been passages and Jesus was on board the ship. He's supposed to be in control of your life. You remember he was asleep in the boat and the storm was raging and they cried out, Master, don't you care? Don't you see we're about to drown and the storm is about to take us over? What did Jesus say? He woke them out of their, they woke him out of his sleep 
The storm didn't. And he got up and <laughs> just like Jesus does. Oh, you of little faith. And then he went and rebuked the wind and the wave and everything settled. I don't know, maybe God is trying to see who you're going to call on or whether or not you're going to panic during this coronavirus storm. But you don't want to forget that God has a plan. Can I get a witness? They forgot that God can inject hope into an absolutely hopeless situation. But really, what stands out in this story to me is Paul's reaction. He didn't get away from the storm. He was in a storm. But it's how you respond while you're in and going through the storm. The Bible says that Paul was calm and confident. The Bible says that Paul had courage in the midst of his crisis. The Bible says that Paul didn't allow the storm to phase him. The sailors' reactions were the natural responses to people who don't trust God like they ought to in the midst of a crisis. They do not have what they need to hold on to because it's not like God pulled away from them. It's that they pulled or we have a propensity, a tendency to pull away from God when everything is comfortable. It's easier to live like a Christian when things are going great. I believe that that's why God can't allow us to have just smooth lives. I can see, and sometimes I fall into a rut. If I got everything going my way, I, I forget to pray like I ought to. You know, I, I don't mean to, but when things are going my way, I, I have a propensity, a tendency to want to, to wanna have it more comfortable. And I hear somebody saying, I don't know why we can't get back to doing things like they used to be. Maybe God says, when you start looking to me, instead of looking for the comfort of what used to be, maybe the storm will be abated. I said, character is revealed in a crisis. It's not made in a crisis. Let me repeat that. Your character is revealed in a crisis. But it's not made in a crisis. Who you are is already there when the storm comes. The storm just reveals who you are and what you are really about. The question, what should we do when things look as if they are falling apart? What should we do when we're battered by big problems? The Bible says in verse 29 of Acts 27, Fearing that we would be dashed against the rocks. The Bible says they dropped, listen, four anchors from the stern and prayed for daylight. Notice the safest thing to do when you get in a storm is to drop your anchor. I wish I had some witnesses in here. Or perhaps a better way to say it is just stand still. Can I get a witness and see the salvation of the Lord? In other words, situations change as time goes by. But the Bible says that those who put their trust in God are immovable like Mount Zion. I found out that oftentimes when people encounter a major problem, they want to change everything else in their lives at the same time because the situation feels overwhelming and they can't stand still. But a person will lose his or her spouse by the death or divorce. And the typical reaction is, I'm going to quit my job. No, we have tragedy. We have trauma. We have difficulties. We have uh, 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 distressing problems that come about. But it's not time to get rid and to change. We need to conform to the will of the God who allowed it. I said... They needed to put down some anchors and get some stability. The question I asked somebody, why was Paul so confident? Here we hear he's in the midst of a storm. He's going through the storm. It's not just him, it's a bunch of other crew members that are in the storm. But Paul, Paul remains confident. 
Why was he confident? I believe it was, he was encouraged by at least three anchors of the soul. You want to get this, my brothers and sisters. You and I are going through. You may want to take up what Paul did and what Paul relied on when he was going through the storm. I said he took up three anchors, three truths that can anchor you and I on the rock of stability, which is Jesus Christ. In other words, when the winds and storms of life crisis blow you and I back and forth, we can have hope and confidence. I said there are three things that will stabilize you and I in the storm. You really want to get this. Number one, the anchor of his presence. Number two, the anchor of his purpose. And number three, the anchor of his promise. In other words, the first anchor in a storm or crisis is the presence of God. Can I get a witness? God is present in your storm. Or have you forgotten? God said he'll never leave nor forsake you. Storms can never hide us from God. We may not see him, but that doesn't mean he's not there with us. Can I get a witness? You might think God is a million miles away, but no, he's with us. He's watching us. I wish somebody out there would wave their hand and said, I know my God is with me. I know my God is watching me. How do I know? Because he said so. In other words, we never go through anything by ourselves. No matter what your situation, you and I are going to get through it. Can I get a witness? God is the anchor that we can fully trust. In verse 24 of Acts chapter 27, Paul quotes God's angel who visited him in the night. And the angel said to Paul, like I hear the angel saying to you and I, don't be afraid. You must stand, Paul, before Caesar. In other words, God had a purpose for Paul. And no storm was going to keep Paul or circumvent God's purpose for Paul. God told Paul, I have a plan for your life. But not only anchor number one, the presence of God. But secondly, there's anchor number two. In a storm... That's where you find out God's purpose. In other words, every brother, every sister, every believer ought to have a sense of destiny or purpose. You and I are not here on earth just to take up space. God has a specific purpose and a plan for your life. Do I have a witness out there somewhere? God knows what he's doing. I might not know what God is doing, but I trust him enough to whatever he wants and whatever his will is, let it be done. I found out that storms are simply temporary setbacks for a comeback. Can I get a witness? If you choose to reject the plan, then you perhaps will put yourself in double jeopardy. Imagine being in a storm that God's going to get you out of, and because you don't follow directions while you're in the storm, you put yourself in more harm's way by not following the directions of the God who controls the storm. I shudder to think about that. But no matter what happens on the outside, no external force can keep God from fulfilling his purpose in your life and mine. The verse says, the Bible says in verse 25, Acts chapter 27, Paul says, keep up, don't miss that, keep up your courage. In other words, storms have a propensity to batter us, wear us out, wear us down. God says, keep up your courage. As a matter of fact, the same God that gave you courage in the first place is the same God that will supply you more courage to sustain you throughout the ordeal. Can I get a witness? Not only his presence and not only his purpose, but thirdly and lastly, as I close, God's promise. Does anybody know that God has promised us some things? God is faithful to his promises. 
I wish I had some witnesses up in here. See, storms can't hide our faces from God because God is always with us. I don't know, care how strong your storms are. God still has everything under control. Let me give you a testimony. Just the other day, they said out where I live in Media, Middletown, said we were going to get violent storms, wind gusts up to maybe 70 miles an hour, enough to blow down trees, damage property, damage your home. I'm going to be the first one to tell you I started trusting God like I've been trusting, but I had in the back of my mind, Lord, suppose I get caught in this bed and a tree comes down. And my wife and I said, let's be wise stewards. If it blows that hard, we might have to find another safe place in the house. You say, wait a minute, preacher. I thought you had confidence that God will take care of the tree and the storm. And I do. But then I have confidence to know if God says get out of that room and get in another room to go there too. Can I get a witness? I said our problems may be overwhelming and I'm trying to close. And we think we're going under for the last time. But God says this to you and I. You may lose the cargo. You may lose the tackle of the ship. You may lose the ship. You may even get wet, but you're going to make it because of the promise of God. That's what happened in the passage. The same thing the sailors did. They were fearing that they would be dashed against the rocks. The Bible says they dropped the anchors from the stern and they prayed for daylight. Something about a storm that'll get you on your knees. Something about a storm that'll get you to stop looking around and looking down and to start looking up. In other words, you got to anchor yourself on the truth of God and pray. But notice the text says, after, somebody say after, after the storm was over. I said after the storm was over. The Bible says morning came. After the storm was over. In other words, weeping may endure for a night, but joy, joy comes in the morning. Can I get a witness? The Bible says the sailors didn't recognize the land, but they saw a bay. Y'all read it when you get a chance. With a sandy beach and they decided to run the ship aground. The Bible says all the people jumped overboard and got safely to the land. Now I want you to know don't jump unless the Lord tells you. Amen somebody. And verse 39 begins again when morning came. They didn't recognize the coastline but they saw a bay with a beach and wondered if they could get to shore by running the ship aground. The Bible says they cut off anchors. Who is your anchor this morning? What is your anchor this morning. In other words, can't you see you've got to have the anchor of blessed assurance, God's assurance. It's one thing and it's necessary when death is imminent to have insurance. Yes, it is. Everybody should have insurance to cover expenses. But in life, when you're facing life-threatening crisis, it's even much better to have assurance. I wish I had some witnesses. When life's ships of mortality take up anchor and departs from one location to another, it's better to have assurance. When you leave out the house as little as you do to go down to the supermarket and you go down to the pharmacy, there's no guarantee that you're going to make it back. But you need to make sure you have assurance. I like what the songwriter said, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine, heir of salvation. I wish I had some singers. 
branches of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. It goes on to say, this is my story. What's your story this morning? This is my song, praising my savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song, praising my savior all the day long. Wait a minute. One last thing. What about you this morning? Do you have God's blessed assurance? I'm just asking you a question. Do you have crisis or do, are you prepared with crisis intervention? Have you anchored yourself with the presence of God? Have you anchored yourself with God's purpose? Have you anchored yourself with God's promise? Remember the songwriter said, though the storms keep on raging in my life, and sometimes it's hard to tell my night from day, still that hope that lies went in is reassured as I keep my eyes upon the distant shore. I know you should know something. He'll lead me safely to that blessed place he has prepared. But, y'all need to get that consecrated conjunction. But if the storms don't cease, and if the wind keeps on blowing in my life, my soul, my soul, my soul has been anchored in the Lord. Is your soul anchored in the Lord this morning? Are you grounded in your faith this morning? Do you realize the billows may roll and the breakers may dash? I shall not sway because he holds me fast. My soul is anchored in the Lord. What about you? Is your soul anchored in the Lord? I pray so. All heads bowed and all eyes closed. Perhaps you're in here this morning. And this message is just for you. God wants you to know that in the midst of the storm, God can keep you, is keeping you, and will continue. I'm talking about crisis intervention. You don't wait until the storm comes to prepare. You prepare before the storm comes so you're able to stand. The Bible says that our storm, the biblical storm in the beginning started with sin. The wages of sin is death, separation from God. God says sin has penalty, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. What are you offering to us today, to me, preacher, pastor? I'm offering you eternal life through Jesus Christ. The Bible says, and I know we're going through Corona virus and I'm not guaranteed, neither are you to make it through. But if I don't make it through, I have blessed assurance. I'm going to be all right. But I'm believing that God can get us through. But it's because I've placed and you've placed your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. He paid the penalty for your sins and mine. In other words, you want to get to heaven, Jesus said, I am the way, I'm the truth, and I'm the life. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You want to get to heaven? You don't want to be consumed and worried about this storm? I'm not saying don't do what we need to do to get through it, but just in case, just in case it's all over. You want to be secure in Christ. Say this prayer, if you would. I'm talking about the man, a woman, young, old, that has never asked the Lord Jesus Christ into their life because we're all going to pass away sooner or later. But after death, the Bible says, there's judgment. If you haven't never prayed this prayer, this is for you today. Dear Lord, I know that I'm a sinner and I cannot save myself. I acknowledge that there's nothing that I can do 
in and of myself to keep me from judgment. So Lord, I accept your son, the Lord Jesus Christ, as my personal savior. He died for my past, present, and future sins. He said he is the way. Jesus said, I am the way, I'm the truth, and I'm the life. No man or woman, boy or girl, can get to my Father in heaven except by me. Lord, I surrender my life to Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for saving me. If you said that prayer this morning, welcome to the family of God. Give God some praise if you would out there. And before we close, I want to remind us next first Sunday of May, we're going to have communion. So all you've got to do is get yourself a piece of bread or cracker and some juice. And after the first Sunday, that sermon, we're going to take communion together. Amen? God bless you and heaven smile upon you. To our ABC Church family and friends, we truly hope this message has been a blessing to you and your family. We look forward to sharing God's word with you again in the near future. Because of the coronavirus, we're not able to gather together in one local assembly, but audio and video technology allows us to come together. To God be the glory. You know we support our church and its ministries by our giving through tithes and love offerings support for me, your pastor. To give, please click on the links below. Again, please stay encouraged. Remember Psalms 46 says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in our time of trouble. God bless you.